The QSIN standards are designed for us as nurse educators to have a clear framework and guidelines based on the competency statements to help ensure we are integrating evidence-based practices related to patient safety and quality into our curriculum. Welcome back everybody to Dr. Sellers Educate. We are continuing to explore this very important framework as we dig deeper into our next category associated with the QSIN competencies. We're taking it a step further by aligning not only those QSIN competencies with the AAC and Essentials, and that work has already been done as we utilize the crosswalk that was developed by QSIN in order to set a solid foundation for the curriculum that we are developing for each of these episodes. The next step is to align them with the NLN nurse educator competencies, because you may be wondering, okay, that's good to know, but what does this have to do with me on my journey to achieve certification? That's an excellent question. And one that through our crosswalk, you will be able to see very clearly. If you haven't already, we want you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. So you'll be notified right away as soon as a new episode is released, which usually happens every single week. The second step we want you to take is to print out your study worksheet. Now, if you haven't already, it's not too late. We want you to print that out every single time you show up for a new snapshot because this is going to help you stay organized. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I attend a lot of different webinars and it's tough for me sometimes to remember the date. This is going to help you not only stay very organized, but stay on track with identifying where your gaps are, having the resources at your fingertips to help make sure you are closing your knowledge gaps before you show up for the exam. Well, speaking of knowledge gaps, we wanna start out by celebrating a recent report that we heard from one of our nurse educator colleagues. We had the honor of meeting her at the NLN Education Summit that was just a few weeks ago in Baltimore, Maryland. So she says on Facebook, well, actually this was LinkedIn, Attending my first NLN conference where I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Sellers from Dr. Sellers Educate. Thanks to her mentorship and encouragement, I successfully passed the Certified Nurse Educator c &E exam last year. Her live prep course, study plan, workbook, and additional resources were invaluable. Grateful to be at the NLN conference one year later. So congratulations to this amazing nurse educator colleague. We know the journey can be very challenging for many of us. It took me eight years. That's exactly right. You heard correctly. Eight years to get the NLN CNE certification off of my bucket list. Life happens. There were kids, there were deployments with my husband because he's a retired Marine. And also there was life. I was a full-time um, nurse executive and I was also in a PhD nursing program because as I'm sure some of you can relate to, we like to be overachievers. So I had quite a bit of competing priorities. We here at Dr. Sellers Educator are on a mission and it is to support every single nurse educator to achieve certification by NLN, okay? And we wanna make sure that we're supporting you every single step of the way. So we do have mentoring and coaching available as well. Let's now go ahead and take a look at your website resources that are gonna help you make sure that you're looking at the right content on your journey, either towards achieving certification. Some of you may though be coming back because you are coming here because you are on the journey to recertify. Congratulations to you as well. Or perhaps you are here just to learn a little bit more information about how you can be an even better nurse educator tomorrow than you were today, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look first at the QSIN website. You're gonna see a couple of resources. First, I'm gonna point out the one that we're gonna use today, which is our QSIN AAC and Crosswalk. We're gonna take a look at that actual Excel spreadsheet, but once you click on it here, this is how you would get to it. There are two different crosswalks, one for the graduate level and then one for the pre-licensure. So there are lots of great work that has already been done um, by faculty that are listed here. And we're using the resources that are already published and available and building on those as we align and really map QSIN competencies, AAC and essentials back to our NLN nurse educator competencies. Some other additional information that you will see here on the website is going to be a listing of all six of those QSIN competencies. 
You can easily get to more detailed information about these competencies when you click on them um, by actually clicking on the specific competency. You're going to see the knowledge, skills, and attitudes associated with each of the competencies, as well as a definition. Hallmarks of Excellence is the next resource we want to point out. Now, this is published by NLN, and it's been a couple of years ago. Um, at the very bottom, you can see that it was published in April 2020. Um, but this was work that was um, completed by NLN after there was data retrieved from an, through a national survey by NLN amongst the membership and selected thought leaders in nursing education is what they utilized to develop these hallmarks of excellence. Okay, and then the last resource that we want to take a look at is the actual um, QSIN cross, Crosswalk by AACN, QSIN, if I can get that out, QSIN AACN Essentials Crosswalk. Okay, so this is the document that you can get to from the website that we just looked at. And we focus on the entry level tab, but you can see that there's a breakdown with um, a lot of detail information, which is a wonderful detail information, by the way to really help guide us as we are developing our curriculum or, or perhaps even revising our curriculum based on feedback that we may have heard from students, or it could be based on our healthcare partners feedback about our students' inability to perform uh, a clinical practice, or even our own faculty, if they wanna take a closer look at alignment it, within our nursing curriculum to the QSIN competencies and statements as listed here in um, column C. All right, and then the last document that we're gonna be looking at in our time together today is going to be the crosswalk that we have developed here at Dr. Sellers Educate to help show strong alignment between these competencies and the NLN nurse educator competencies. We started the previous episode and looking at communication and patient safety. And in this episode, we are taking a look at the category of clinical knowledge to support patient-centered care. It is aligned with the NLN nurse educator competencies of facilitate learning, and that is mapped back to CNE and CNE novice, curriculum development aligned with all three of the exams, and facilitating learning in the healthcare environment aligned with the CNE CL a detailed exam blueprint. There are several different competencies that we could have pulled out that map back to this really important category. However, we did want to just give you a snapshot of content to help you continue on your journey. Before we get too far, though, into our content review, we want to make sure that we take the time to look at our thought-provoking question. We always like to do that. Um, and in this episode, as we focus on um, the specific patient-centered care category, we wanted to take a look at a statement associated with this specific content. So when we look at person-patient-centered care, it focuses on the individual from a holistic, coordinated, and evidence-based perspective. In the context of this type of care, what does shared decision-making refer to? All right, so we have three options because we have adopted the practice that NLN will be moving to effective in 2024 for all three exams. Um, we understand that one of the exams, CNE clinical, is already moved to three options. All right, so that's why you only see three options in front of you. So we have A, making decisions based on the physician opinion and family's request. B, involving patients in healthcare decisions and considering preferences. Or C, reviewing documentation about patients' wishes for their health care. So what you want to do is you want to think about what is the best answer. Remember, this is a thought-provoking question for a reason, right? We want to stimulate thought. However, there is one best answer that we're going to be talking about in our time together today. Just to recap, these are the primary resources that you will use to specifically look at your ability to demonstrate alignment with the nurse educator competencies to increase application and analysis. That's what this work is really all about. We know that the detailed exam blueprint has a strong um, component of application and analysis when we look at the questions on the exam. We want you to be fully equipped, not only with the knowledge that you need, but the ability 
to apply these concepts and analyze these concepts when they show up on your NLN CNE exam. And remember that we use the term CNE loosely. We are referring to all three exams. So there is a CNE novice exam that was introduced last year. This is designed for the nurse educator that has less than three years of nurse educator experience. And then we have the academic nurse educator, and then we have the academic clinical nurse educator as well. All right, so now as we go back to the crosswalk that we have developed that aligns the NLN nurse educator competencies and includes the hallmarks of excellence with the QSIN standards as well as those AACN essentials. Okay, so we've already introduced the nurse educator competencies as associated with patient-centered care. The next category we're taking a look at is the, going to be the hallmarks of excellence. Okay, it goes back to this document that we looked at here. You're gonna see the detailed information that we use to align our crosswalk with these competencies by clicking on the actual hallmarks of excellence document. Okay, and that will open for you. And then you're gonna see um, a lot of excellent detail, which we'll go ahead and show you here in case you haven't seen it already. This is a resource that we also use to map our curriculum with all of the content, especially when we use it for the refresher course regarding recertification process. Okay, so this is the document, the Hallmarks of Excellence document that was developed by NLN, as we saw previously, to help ensure that we are clear about the indicators or the behaviors and the descriptors that we should integrate into our nursing programs to ensure we have an, a nurse educator program or a nursing program that is achieving a high level of excellence. Okay, so that's what that document actually looks like. And now we want to go back to the crosswalk. And in this crosswalk, what you're going to see next is the specific details related to the there we go, the actual hallmarks of excellence. So it's 4-2 and 4-4 the responsibility for us to create innovative evidence-based curriculum. This allows us from the patient-centered care category to engage with students in a way that they're able to interact with patients and families who are diverse in terms of lifestyles and beliefs. We provide experiences to students for them to develop a competence and a confidence to advocate for patients and families. And they're able to connect with our patients in a way to ensure their needs are met. That's what advocacy is all about. The QSIN domain that is aligned with this specific category is going to be patient-centered care. The QSIN KSAs, again, we just pulled um, a couple of these to demonstrate alignment with the content of, under the nurse educator competency that we're taking a look at. Okay, so K, the knowledge is integrate understanding of multiple dimensions of patient-centered care. The skill is that students will be able to communicate patient values, preferences, and express needs to other members of the healthcare team. And the attitude is that the students will be able to value seeing healthcare situations through the patient's eyes, advocating for the patient, listening to the patient, respecting the patient's beliefs and opinions as it relates to the type of care that they want to receive. The essentials domains, it's tied to and connected to four. And again, there are plenty more that we could have tied it to, but for purposes of this brief snapshot, we just wanted to give you some key domains associated with the patient-centered care. First is going to be domain one, knowledge for nursing practice, 1.3C, the ability for the student to demonstrate clinical knowledge founded on a broad knowledge base, okay? And then domain two is person-centered care, the student being able to engage with the individual in establishing a care and relationship and to integrate assessment skills in practice. We know that Tanner's clinical judgment model spells out the four different phases associated with the development of clinical judgment. So we also wanna make sure we're aligning our outcomes and our um, learning experiences for our students in the clinical setting with Tanner's model. The third domain is six, interprofessional partnerships. Students are able to communicate in a manner that facilitates a partnership approach to quality care delivery. We know in nursing, we don't act alone, right? We collaborate with the team of professionals to provide 
high quality patient care. And then the last domain is professionalism is domain nine, aligned with specifically domain 9.2, the ability to employ participatory approach to nursing care. So again, we're not acting alone, that each team member is respected and we are valuing their input regarding the patient care delivery process. So what are the teaching strategies that we wanna focus on? Well, um, that's something for you all to think about, but we wanna go ahead and share some references that will give you some suggested ideas to take a look at. Um, so first is gonna be the quality of care and patient safety, Billings and Halstead pages 95 to 97. Interprofessional clinical education, page 335 in Billings and Halstead. What should those effective clinical teaching skills look like from an educator standpoint? And also, how do we validate that we are ensuring and, and ensure that we are meeting those clinical learning objectives with our students? Okay, so pages 336 through 340 will provide some additional context associated with this specific strategy. What does a prepared faculty member look like? How do we get prepared for the clinical experience? And then how can we prepare our students? So content is going to be on 340 and 341 in Billings and Halstead to help you close your knowledge gap. The resources that we've looked at, you can see those are listed here. Um, the NLN c &E blueprint, that's the detailed exam blueprint. It is included in the NLN c and &E, c and &E clinical and c and &E novice candidate handbook. Okay, so each of them have their own candidate handbook that also includes that detailed exam blueprint. All right, so now that we have went over the crosswalk, each of the categories, we're going to go back to what are some of those teaching and evaluation strategies. So hopefully you've had a chance to write those down on your worksheet, and some of them may include simulation activity. We can develop a scenario and allow students to receive formative feedback from us based on their behaviors, coach them around some uh, more effective behaviors associated with patient-centered care. We can also include unfolding case studies. We can engage in a um, learning circle within the classroom setting so that students are really able to ask questions and to clarify concepts related to person-centered care so that indeed they can meet these essentials and also these QSIN um, competencies and standards that we have described in our snapshot today. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at how you did when it comes to our thought-provoking question. So if you chose um, as the answer B, you are correct. All right, so let's take a look. B is the correct answer, involving patients in healthcare decisions and considering preferences. It's probably fairly obvious, but A leaves the patient out, right? When it talks about shared decision-making, don't be tricked by the fact that it highlights the fact that we want to include the physician opinion and the patient and the family's request, but we forgot about the patient. Okay, so that's why that one is not correct. And then we have C, reviewing documentation about patients' wishes for their health care. Well, that may be important, but there's no information given in the answer or the question that indicates that the patient is not able to make an informed decision for themselves. Okay, so that is why B would be the best option. We hope this information has been helpful. And until next time, make sure that you connect with us on our YouTube channel right here, subscribing if you haven't already. Reach out to us if you have questions, info at Dr. Sellers Educate, and you can find a list of all of our upcoming events and programs over on our website, drsellerseducate.com. We hope this has been helpful and we will see you next time. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.